Hello everyone, great to see you all here. I'm Oz, as, as Laura just uh, mentioned successfully. Uh, and uh, I will talk about today how to design playful variables and, and how then to gamify our lifestyles through them. So to mention myself a little bit, uh, I'm a postdoctoral researcher in gamification group, Tom Peter University, and I, I have my PhD in interaction design. And currently, I'm involved with a lot of projects, uh, but my, one of my primary focuses are variables in, in many different contexts, such as virtual reality, extended reality, and even one of our projects, we're trying to understand how to gamify forest and nature interaction with playful variables and other playful devices. Um, I had also, like, a very, very like, long time ago, it has been seven years, I've been involved in developing games and trying to release them and that, those kind of stuff and I still have that somewhere in my mind. So, let's uh, start, start that. Wearables, uh, I think that's, that's a also kind of a question. What are wearables? What, what, what you are thinking when I say wearables? Can any of you shout me towards there? What is the first thing that you think of when I say wearables? Anyone? A watch, yeah, something else? Hoodie. Okay, interesting. Never got that answer before. Uh, and of course, we can continue with that. And hoodie is a great example. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the watch and smart watches, actually, like the first things that comes to mind. Uh, if you go to and remember the failure of Google Glass, maybe you can immediately start thinking of the smart glasses. Headphones, no, usually no one sa says headphones because they're super integrated in our lives. We're not even aware that they're wearables anymore. Or of course, virtual reality glasses um, that one of the current trends also in gaming. Um, but of course, these are quite standard applications and wearables have also a lot more interesting applications. For example, that Monarch is a very non-utilitarian device that you basically wear to your shoulders and you just socially interact through that. So there's really no real function. What you can do with Monarch? I don't know, it's pretty ambiguous. For example, you can maybe try to intimidate your opponent in a role-playing game by making your shoulders bigger. Or you can just show your ex excitement in another, in, in another social context. Or imagine yourself in a dance party and you're just dancing with your monarchs by making them smaller and bigger in a rhythm. So basically they are work like they are connected to muscles and with muscle activity you're making them bigger or smaller. Another example that is similar to that is, is a spider dress by Anouk Wittbrecht. Uh, I'm sure I just uh, butchered the uh, trans, uh, pronunciation of that. Uh, but that is also pretty similar, right? Uh, but with a very, very different intention. Because in that dress, when someone comes close to you, this spider leg starts to move to intimidate and scare away the passerby. So it's a great social distancing device. As you said. I don't know why it's not a very big success in these years. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, you can see that variables are also, of course, these are extreme examples, but about self-expression. And they are different from other technological devices by that. Because even when you buy your simplest Apple Watch, you're also thinking about what kind of strap you will put onto that. And even sometimes you change its watch face according to what you wear at that day. So they're more visible to outside and uh, they are more part of our self-expression compared to the other, technolo other technological devices we have. So self-expression and what, it's, what it is to do with games. Let's talk about wearables for games a little bit. These are not the most recent examples, I would say, but I cannot also say that there are better examples to talk about in recent years. Uh, but let's talk about, for example, the real Pip-Boy that came out with Fallout 4's Collector Edition. And that Collector Edition was the, fast, uh, the fastest selling Collector Edition ever. And it was a huge hype, but then a little bit of a disappointment when it was released, because there was very limited interaction with the game. But the idea, you can see that, right? You wear that Pip-Boy and actually you're carrying a part of your fictional character that you're controlling in a game on your body. And basically it tries to connect you and identify you with your, with your game character. And Nintendo Switch Labo Robot Kit is kind of a similar approach in that sense. And it's more recent. And you can see that the robot there has a very similar backplate 
uh, to this cardboard thing that you, cardboard backpack that you do. Pokemon Go Plus is again um, kind of an interesting example because it's not screen based. Just the contrary, it tries to save you from looking at the screen. If there are Pokemons around, you just click its button after it's vibrated and it tries to catch the Pokemon. But you can also see that thing there, like when you wear it, you're kind of a Pokemon trainer going around in the, in the, in the real world and you kind of express yourself in that way. So these are of course three examples and uh, these are known examples. Of course, there are old examples like Power Glow, for example, uh, to use uh, your gestures, but they are very limited. So actually we came together with, with uh, my colleagues uh, from uh, University of California, Irvine and Santa Cruz, Testa Nembam and Catherine Espister to answer how to design playful wearables. How can we systemize the ways of designing them and uh, create design knowledge for that? So according to our examination on the projects that we have been done, because I mean, we have been involved in developing those wearables for games for the last five, six years. So we know what is the concerns there, what might be advantages and strengths of wearables. And we just see them in three different ways. Like the first one is a performative plane. That means your self-expression, your performance with variables, and how you connect yourself to character. Second is the social plane, how variables allow you to connect yourself to other players. And interactive plane, what kind of different interactions you can have, have with a variable to play games with that. So here, you can see in a performative plane, for example, their imaginary side, which means a variable can be very undefined but allow players to interpret what it looks like in their imaginary world. On the other hand, it can be pretty much Im uh, immersive and it might be a replica of what is in that imaginary world and uh, it will put you in there uh, exactly. So of course there are like sub dimensions that we have defined such as it can be an accessory that will cover less part of your body or a costume that will cover more, more part of your body and more expressive towards outside. It can be abstract or exact, meaning that in the abstract side, you can interpret what it is. In the exact side, it is kind of the direct replica of whatever it should be in this imaginary world. For example, imagine cosplayers and their great costumes and how they translate from this gaming world to real life. And it can be customized or dedicated. So you can, of course, customize, add or subtract uh, parts to your variables or they can be designed in a way that wouldn't allow that. And of course, then you can try to understand if your variable is more immersive and imaginary. But to just remind you, this is not a mathematical model or anything. It's just about generation. It's more about creativity. And uh, to prompt designers to kind of realize different possibilities that they can do with wearables. So in that sense, for example, I can show you one Example that is more of the imaginary side because it's basically a circuit there. There is nothing designed around that. So you can put it into any context. And this is designed for live action role playing games. And it shows basically your health and your energy level. To, uh, and it's about communicating your in game status to other players. But on the other hand, it can be a lot more immersive with, for example, this wizard costumes that even there's a cauldron, it is quite obvious that you're in that magical imaginary world. When it comes to social plane, variables can facilitate more tighter interactions like this that we missed a lot and I hope you did that in that conference finally, uh, or, or more distance interactions. I'm sure these variables are not facilitating that because usually we cannot hear each other when we wear those masks. But for example, maybe this would facilitate, maybe you would flash some kind of message to, to other players from far away. So that would also facilitate more distant interaction. And it can be also uh, in the interactive plane, facilitate interaction with your surroundings through your gestures, for example, or on the artifact by using and looking at your wearable device. And to give an example, of course, I had to put minority report here because I didn't see it throughout the conference and a tech conference without that. I think it's not a tech conference, so here it is. And then this can be more artifact oriented. For example, you can have some tangible interaction with the device. You can take it, 
take parts out, you can put parts in, uh, and interaction can be around that. So in that sense, of course, if you're, if you're more curious about that, there will be a book releasing in, in next year about designing playful variables. You can go into and, and see the details there. But I'm sure that now you're asking, how may designers use this? Uh, so this is the framework and what to do with that. I will show you some projects and give you some examples through them. The first project that I will show you is WearPG. And WearPG is actually a tabletop role-playing game that is supported by wearable devices and movement-based gameplay. And I'm sure I don't have to explain what tabletop role-playing games are here. Uh, but as you know, uh, there are a lot of dice rolling action. But we wanted to add some spice on that by uh, adding this character identification with movements and costumes. So the game loop is like that. The player first will play a movement-based game. And the result of this movement-based game, meaning that if you're successful in that game or not, will translate into dice outcomes. So if you're more successful, you will have more green sides. If you're less successful, you will have more red sides. And you will roll that again, uh, similar to the uh, other role-playing games. And there are actually seven different uh, games that can be played and adapted to different kind of scenarios by the game master. So for example, if, if the character is shooting an arrow, they can play the precision game first and then decide uh, if, if they shot or didn't shot the, uh, their target. So our framework like, worked more like a critical reflection in the RPG because we tried to understand how we could kind of improve that. The RPG is a pretty customizable system because as you can see, there are this hexagon bases and with this hexagon bases, players can create their gauntlets by themselves. And some of them created those knuckle type of things. Some of them created those gorgeous uh, gauntlets there. But there was one problem. There are sensors also there. And they just put it wherever they want. And it is pretty hard to understand what kind of data that we will extract from there. So this is why the game design around that was pretty ambiguous and was just depending on the threshold, threshold of data. And Although there is a lot of customization, you can also see that they're kind of similar in the, in the sense of how you represent yourself. So we were thinking maybe we could move the RPG from imaginary side to immersive side a little bit to give better uh, self-expression according to what kind of elements that you use in your gauntlet, for example. Uh, and also that will ease, us, uh, ease the game design process for us. So uh, another example that I want to show, the RPG was actually my PhD project and it has been like three years since it was there. And uh, another project I will show is the Hotaru, which is designed by Kaho Abe and uh, researched by Catherine Spister. And I will show you a little video to explain how this is working. And in that one, basically, there is one player who makes that gestures to gather energy in their backpack and when they hold hands this energy is transferred to the other player and this gauntlet bearer can uh, hit the uh, like the targets in, in the sky and uh, it's a pretty interesting game and maybe you can also understand how actually wearables can facilitate tight social interactions because to play that game you have to hold hands you have to be close uh, and uh, Basically, by just game design and the, and the variable design around that, you create this follow with the social interaction. Uh, and when it comes to our kind of um, framework there, we wanted to do some experimentation with that. Because you can see that it's pretty tight side of the dimension here in terms of social interaction. And we were thinking what happens if you just go crazy and put most of the sliders to the other part and can we think about a game design if if it was like that in the in the framework and then we thought about that so you saw the spikes in the gauntlet right instead of those spikes then there can be some cubes that can be scattered around the world and this backpacker can just try to find them and search them and the gauntlet bearer can direct them verbally according to the vibrations that they 
feel. Okay, you're more closer to them, so you can collect them. And when all of them are collected, they can be brought together and they can make the gauntlet and then the process goes as, as in the core original game loop. Of course, that was pretty interesting because we didn't believe at, this, at the beginning that this will create something useful, like just to experiment with those sliders. But actually it did because even like this version can even emphasize this holding hands moments because it's not that iterative anymore and there are a lot more interactions than actions in the, in, in the game. So uh, this is the design framework for playful variables and these were some of the projects that we have done. But you may be asking now, okay, these are projects of live, live action role playing, tabletop role playing or festival games. So can variables be a part of mainstream games? Can we go towards that? And actually, we, were, we went great lengths to understand this, this, uh, the answer to that question. And we made like, a lot of ideation workshops with users, players, experts, uh, to understand what might be the uses of gaming variables. Uh, in, in mainstream games, we have created those design themes. We have created many, many different concepts to understand what might be different use cases and even wore some of them in, in conferences in an augmented reality way uh, to see how, how can they feel. And uh, that's a, like a pretty long user research process that we have created those sponge low fidelity experience prototypes to, to learn from users if they would enjoy in, in, in what ways and made a lot of analysis. And at the end of the day, we have come up with this uh, garment project. Uh, the garment actually is envisioned as a modular wearable device that, pe that players can wear throughout the day, not only wh while playing the game, because we learned that this is pretty hard to convince players to just wear something when they're playing the game and then take it off when, st when they stop playing. So we ideated ways of how we can have a wearable device that can go throughout the day. Uh, and uh, can somehow map, like allow players to map their bodies into their imaginary characters and can be adapted to different kinds of games. So this is uh, kind of, I will show you a video of our current research prototype and kind of an in-house uh, demonstration uh, game that we have done to explain the current concept in a little bit more better way. So, in that one, yep, I was expecting for the music. So basically this is just for explaining the concept and how it would work if, if it was uh, integrated in a game. Um, here the game basically prompts for user to do some physical activities uh, to unlock a space uh, that is not, cannot be reached. And in that one, somehow also uh, adapted to the narrative, the user needs to gather energy by doing meditation to open that door and, and, and go through that. Of course, we think about a lot of different use cases. This is one unlockable place that we thought it can be any in-game reward. It can be a currency, it can be an in-game item, or it can be character progression or improvement of skills. Uh, the idea here is to prompt gamers also to keep playing their games in their physical lives and also encouraging them to do more physical activities. So, like about that project, it started two years ago, as I said, and the research project part is finished and we are in the preparation stage today for the next era of that. And in the next year, we will implement an EIT Digital European Union project uh, that is budgeted to 750k uh, euros and we will uh, found a spin-off company that will try to commercialize that idea. So, the, so the, our aim here is to create a happy and healthy youth through, through games. Oops, oh, wrong, wrong picture. Yeah, happy and healthy youth through, through games and uh, try to um, make games again a part of this without creating this kind of more gimmicky gamification applications, but by working with real developers and real games. But of course, that would be pretty hard to do 
alone. So we need actually also game developers who would want to be the part of this. And we are pretty much aware that developers already have to grow their sixth arm to do everything they need to do. And we're not trying to add another arm there. So this is why we're introducing this concept right now. So we can be in conversation, we can talk to each other and understand how we can make this uh, beneficial for developers and players and also a, a running successful business. At the end of the day, we think Garment is a brand that promotes the well-being of gamers and we think all of the game developers who can be a part of that as ally developers to that cause and also a part of first variable platform for gaming. So, um, if you're interested, I mean, that would be great to hear from all, all of you. You can contact me from that email or you can contact uh, my colleague Vincent from that other email there. And I thank you all for being here, quite a crowd for Sunday, and I can have your questions. Thank you very much for your presentation. You just shown uh, a meditation session, mm -hmm. yes? Uh, please tell me how you, how your products uh, are being used for meditation. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it is very interesting because I practice uh, meditation traditionally. Mm -hmm. uh, please tell me, it is very interesting. Yeah, uh, so we're now also, we have a partner called Kinetic Analysis, which is a, a company that implements machine learning algorithms for posture detection. And in our Envision device, we have different modules that you can put different parts of your body. And uh, throughout training this data, we can understand different postures, for example, also in med meditation, but even kind of also breathing uh, through, through, through IMUs placed in the waist. So that is uh, how, how it is uh, done uh, by understanding different modules in different parts of the body. Yeah. Uh, so, the first thing I thought of with this tech is, has this been thought about being used for like LARPs and the Nordic LARP scene? Because it's been, it, it was my immediate thought when seeing this was, why aren't we using these for LARPs? Are they too fragile or the, mm. what is, what, is that a consideration that's being done? Yeah, like uh, definitely they can be used uh, for LARPs. It's not in, in our fr pr first primary goals, but I mean, I have, I have worked on tabletop role-playing games, we have worked with LARPers and it's a very fascinating area also for me. But yeah, I mean, first we were planning to uh, implement this very sturdy device that can be used in all activities in our daily life. And then when we do that, I think LARPs are a great uh, use case to, to, to implement them. Mm -hmm. oh. Hi, uh, thanks for talk. Um, Obviously, your uh, wearables need some controller that's controlling behavior. Uh, what's your uh, choice of controller? Uh, do you mean like controller to, to the game? Like uh, for, uh, for the, game? the wearable, like uh, what's mm -hmm. controlling the movement, uh, lights and ah, logic. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, uh, all these uh, definitions will be through middleware that connects games uh, and, and a device to, to the cloud system. And um, of course, there will be then, then, then this interface, what you want to see on, on your variable, because there are different five top modules and you can basically assign whatever data you want to you wanna see there. If you want to see the clock, then it can be assigned. If you want to see an icon of the tr skill that you're training from the game, it can be there or if it's step count, then it can be there and it's through a mobile interface. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any more questions? Thanks for the talk. Um, my question is this, uh, going from the game with the uh, meditation mechanics yeah. uh, and unlocking all that stuff, is there like a game that exists right now out there that's popular that you think and go, of oh, that could really use uh, wearables, or do you think that these games should be made like specifically for these mechanics? Mm -hmm. uh, our our aim is not to make this specifically for 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 that 
mechanics and try to keep the portfolio as as uh, wide as possible so every kind of gamer can be can be a part of it and use it uh, to encourage themselves to be more physically active um, but if you're if you're asking what kind of game mechanics has been taught so far uh, is um, yeah, like the, of course, the first thing that comes to mind and most probably easier to implement is again in game currencies or in game items that can be uh, given with that. Uh, but especially like this unlockable places are pretty interesting case for, uh, let's say, action games or other types of games. But it needs, of course, I think working together with developers from the beginning to understand how we can implement them there. But we're not thinking about a game that needs garment to play with but C, uh, C garment is an additional value on, on uh, top of uh, the, the other parts of the game so it the game wouldn't uh, stop because you don't have garment or because you didn't make your physical activity but it will just encourage you to continue that uh, that activity thank you Uh, first, thank you for the talk. Uh, I'm wondering how are you designing it for, uh, let's say, people with disabilities or people who might not be able to perform uh, these various activities that you're suggesting? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, and uh, definitely, like, non-normative bodies are, uh, are our concern in the sense because in whole human-computer interaction, we always assume that bodies are one type and feels the same thing. Um, but to be honest, of course, we don't have any detailed answer to that. Um, but that's also a very good concern to be voiced here because that will be still a design process of what kind of activities people want to do and uh, what, will be, what will be attractive to them throughout their bodily sensations and bodily experience of daily life. And everyone has, has a different experience of daily life. And that's a yeah, very good concern to be voiced here, and thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Could you please explain what kind of partnership could happen between your company and developer? Yeah, you great. Know. Thank you for that. Um, that is also still something that we're working on and understand what developers would want. And we talk, I think, most of the developers here and everyone has a different kind of request for, from that. And it is tailored because it's about what you can get out of this, right? If you, because what, what we think that we can give game developers is increased engagement and also a better publicity in the sense that they're part of this program that promotes well-being of gamers. But there might be other needs uh, like advertisement needs or other kind of business deals that that needs to be done. Uh, and this is basically discussed uh, one by one with every developer. Because I think like bigger, bigger studios has very many different uh, needs compared to smaller studios. And we're open to discuss all of them to make a, a solution and go forward with the project. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any more questions? If not, in that case, we say a big thank you to Gameway Festival's last speaker presentation for this year.